So how long did she own this place? Wow. You mind if I take a couple pictures? Now, what was the asking price? She, she bought this at uh, November 5th, 2018. Okay. So, yeah, it's been a little over two years. Asking price is $99,999. Wow. <laughs> Does that seem reasonable though? I mean, I guess the market is a little short of, uh, of inventory, but that's yeah, just... we are. Um, we I've never seen inventory so. Well. Let me get out of the photos. I don't like my photo taken. <laughs> uh, I, I, saw I saw the pictures you. I saw the pictures you took. They, they they pretty much did it justice. Yeah. 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 So um, interesting colors though. Um, so what is this like a? Pecan cake or something like that. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so, in full disclosure, I used to own this house. Oh, really? <laughs> I did. This unit? I did. <laughs> I sold it to her. You did? Oh, you know what? Now, yeah, and I should have caught that on the I, I, you, I, I remember you. I, yeah. I, you look very familiar. Yeah, He's like, don't say anything like <laughs> Well, it's, no, but it's funny because I, and now that you say it, I'm like, oh yeah, Brandon Bishop. Because yep. it, you know what? If you said to me who sold it to her, I just was looking at the deed the other day. Yep. <laughs> so it probably would have jogged my memory. But um, she yeah. she changed nothing. It's exactly the way I left it. Even the paint yeah. in the in the closet is those are all the cans I left behind. Yep. And uh, oh. Yeah, you know, I think she bought flooring. She was going to redo this flooring, and then they, they yeah. didn't. And, yeah. um, you know, she had no trouble renting it out. I mean, this carpet, you wouldn't know it, but it's 37 years old. <laughs> <laughs> he cooked our first meal on this. We ate our, we ate our first dinner on that table right there. I love it. I love it. Well, yeah, that was a t I left that behind. That's still there. Yeah. Yeah, we, we had our first meal together there. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, so I did help her buy it, and yep. I know when I came back in, I'm like, I forgot how cute this was. Yeah, it but is. Yeah, so Brandon, the only thing she's done is the stove. Yep. Really. Yeah. Yeah, it, it looks you know, brand it's new. Just, uh, the market has certainly changed a lot in the last couple of years, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there you have it. That was my condo. Um, I bought it back in 07, in the fall of 07 for eighty four thousand five so eighty four five and I lived in it for nearly twelve years sold it in the fall of two thousand eighteen and I got just sixty five thousand five hundred for it and um, it is currently on the market two and a half years later again for ninety nine 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 I think it is and it's already sold it's, it's under contingency. It was on the market for, at, at that price, it was on the market for maybe less than a week. And that is what it is selling for. I cannot believe it. Um, but the real estate market really is that volatile. It's crazy. Um, never in a million years did I ever think it would go back up in value. But I'm glad I sold it when I did because, um, I mean... Let's be honest, when I went to go buy a house, because I, I went straight from the condo, essentially, to the house I'm in now. And had I waited, you know, before buying again, I would have paid almost double what I ended up paying for the house I'm in now. So it all worked out in the end. I'm not sore at all about losing out on what the market or what the condo could potentially have been worth just two years later. I'm not even the least bit sore about it because I made up for that loss in the property that I bought afterwards. More than made up for that loss. But let's get back to what was, the, I mean, the woman who bought the condo from me, it was actually a, it was a husband and wife and their daughter. And um, the daughter was supposed to live in the place as she was attending college, but she ended up renting it out. And, um, and you can clearly see she did nothing. I looked at everything in that house and the only thing they did, now even the curtains that I made are still in the windows. Um, the curtains, the blinds, the, um, the carpeting that is 36 years old 
and I have actually done numerous oil changes on that on that carpeting. I can't believe it's still there. Um, but I took care of it. I kept it cleaned. I even shampooed the rugs before I left. Um, I just wanted to leave it in, in, in tip-top condition. Um, nothing seems to be aged at all. I mean, everything looks exactly as it did when I left it two and a half years ago. Um, the only difference being the... I noticed that the closet door on the outside that you can see in this photo, um, the doorknob is, the paint is starting to fade off on the doorknob. They're, they're actually an oil rubbed bronze finish doorknob that I bought. They didn't even change the locks. I, 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 they didn't even change the locks. I still have a key to that place. It's insane. They did nothing to that condo. Absolutely nothing. They changed out the stove. For some god-known reason, um, I, I don't know why they would have done that. The stove that was there was of better quality. But, hey, whatever, I, that's their thing. But I did everything. I, I painted the walls. I, um, I did the furnace replacement on that. I did that. I think it was uh, February of 2014. It was the coldest week I had ever experienced living there. And the original furnace had finally died after about 30 years. So I installed the exact same model that they still produce, but with an electronic ignition. And it's still going strong. So, I mean, the good news is everything I did is holding up just fine. And, um, but that was, that will be the, that will likely be the last time I ever set foot in that place. In fact, I said that two and a half years ago when I handed the keys over, but, um, yeah, that was the first time I walk I ever set foot in that place uh, since um, November 2018 when I when I sold oh, October I sold it in October of 2018 as a matter of fact. Um, but yeah, no changes. Uh, curtains, carpeting, paint, they did nothing, um, which is fine because I left it in pretty good shape. But. Uh, it's hard to believe that that is where that is where my channel was created. That's where B Bishop PCM's world began, and I and when it popped up on the market, I I asked my girlfriend if she'd go with me to check it out, and and that was the woman that I that you saw walking around upstairs. That's Amelia. Um, we've been dating ever since, actually. Ever since I sold that condo, we've been together. Um, it's crazy how time flies, but um, still there. Uh, the place is, it, it was immaculate. Yeah, they took really good care of it. I got to give them credit for that. Um, but the counter bar that I built, holding up nicely. Only I know, and now you know that there are, um, I, I, anytime I open up a wall cavity for anything, I would put something in there. And inside the, the counter bar is a complete set of Burger King Simpsons toys. My sister gave them to me. Um, when they had, when they stopped uh, giving out Simpson toys, she gave me a complete set in the wrappers, and I put them all inside the wall, in the uh, counter bar. But um, yeah, it was kind of funny, you know, just checking it out after after all these years. And I do I miss it? I mean, I get asked that a lot from some viewers too. Do I miss living up there? I actually kind of do. It was very peaceful. It was quiet, but it was also you had no privacy because the neighbors were right there. You know, you had neighbors on either side of you. You could hear everything they said. They could hear everything you said. You just had to keep that in mind when you were having conversations with people or what have you. Um, but uh, I still keep in touch with both neighbors, as a matter of fact, on either side of me. I still I still keep in touch with them. They're great people. Um, but there it is, the old condo. It's funny because it did come up in a video. Re uh, no, not a video. It was a comment that somebody had made about that. Um, but, uh, yeah, there it is. And that's, uh, so that's pretty much it. Um, and we're just going to go through a slideshow of different photos that I've taken, um, from the day I bought the house. Well, I've already started the slideshow, but from when I bought it to when I sold it. And, um, you can see this is the kitchen before the counter bar was built, um, <clears throat> before I painted the walls, before I replaced the dishwasher. One of the first things I did when I bought the place was I installed all new light fixtures. I probably should have taken more photos of it when I bought it, like the day I bought it, because it had all the original 1980s brass and glass light fixtures, and they were hideous. 
Here's a picture of my bedroom uh, after, looks like after I built the wall, the, the knee wall, which separated the stairwell from the bedroom floor. You see we've got the Apple IIe, I have a, um, looks like the, oh that was a power, uh, what was that thing, a Motorola StarMax. I've got an LC2, a Power Mac 6100. And my second Apple II GS, that was a Waz edition. I don't have that one anymore. On the floor, I've got an old server. I think it was a Dell PowerMate or something like that. Here's a photo of my, uh, my first spring-wound phonograph. This is my Columbia Graphenola. A nice photo that I took right off the back deck. I put the phonograph on the table, and I wanted to get the neighbor's flower box and... Uh, in the tree line in the background. I thought that was a nice photo that I took. I used to take a lot of photos off that deck because it was like, uh, it was beautiful, it was gorgeous. Um, now, I probably should shorten the transition time of these photos because that is pretty, uh, pretty extensive. Come on, there we go. This is the engine of my Honda Elite 150 Deluxe that I tore down on the living room table while watching primetime television. Uh, you know, like I said, I did a lot of mechanical type repairs in the living room because it was the only place I could work in the cold. And what I would do is I would, um, I would drape cloths or something down on the table to prevent damage. I think what I used was an old boot tray that I stuck on the table. It was like a rubber mat. And, um, and that's how I was able to work on the engine. This is the Elite 150 chassis. Uh, while I was doing some electrical diagnostics, I had to drag this. It was in the middle of winter, and I had to drag the scooter into the living room and start tearing body panels off. Um, you know, you take... I, right now, I have a, a 1,040-square-foot basement to take advantage of and a garage. And it's easy to take those things for granted when you, and then you realize what you had and what you have now, and it, it's just mind blowing. Um, <laughs> I was watching, it looks like Roseanne, and you can see the scooter in the background. Uh, at this point, I think it was a running, drivable machine, and I just. I started parking it in the living room as I started fixing it up uh, just to keep it from from getting weather beaten any further than it already had been. I might get another scooter. I've really thought about it. Um, it has come to mind. I do miss it. You know, having a Mazda Miata is fun and all, but nothing beats two wheels. Nothing, nothing can replace that and and I've considered it greatly uh, one of the reasons I haven't gone and done it is because um, I'm finding that people are driving worse as of late and people just are not paying attention and there's no denying that you know if I were to get another bike I would I would be in another I, there's no question I'd get into another accident maybe the next one would be fatal you know who knows another photo of the background of the mountains. This is the Elite 150 after I repainted the whole thing. So what I did was I got it running. I got it. I did it. I really went through that bike. I mean, from stem to stern, I went right through it. You know, I did brakes. I did uh, <clears throat> all major engine gaskets and seals. I did. Oh, that was a short one. So here's the living room. This, when was this one taken? After I painted the I painted the accent wall by the slider, I made that an accent wall by painting it the same color as the bedroom. Uh, this would have been after 2010, possibly 2011, because you can see the plasma TV on the stand. That's when I bought. I still have that TV actually, it still works. This was a snowstorm of 2011, winter of 2011. I I took this picture because it made my car look like a Prius. It was actually a blue Hyundai Elantra GLS. And it made it look like a Prius. I thought that was kind of funny. Um, a really big Prius, but uh, and a much heavier one at that, with all that snow. But we used to get raging snowstorms up there. 
um, it was they were brutal um, because it was a lot colder up in the mountain area you know you get a lot of heavy snow so here's the ceiling fan during the installation so what I did is I test fit all the conduit first and once I was satisfied with where it was and bends and all that I took it all down and I painted it flat black and it's to this day it looks beautiful um, the fan is still up there still functional um, I installed the fan sometime in uh, probably 20, probably 2011, I think. Pretty sure it was somewhere around there. And there's the completed job. You'll notice that it enters the wall, like the conduit enters the wall through a gas line fitting that I bought, and it just fit the bill perfectly. I snake the I snake the wire down to an outlet box. I actually know I cut in a secondary outlet box. And I daisy chained it off the uh, exterior um, deck light fixture. So, uh, so it's not on the same switch, but it's on the same circuit. Now, this is during the construction phase of the counter bar. So I had to load all that lumber. I borrowed a truck. I got all those cabinets for free. I got them used. You can see the six foot countertop, you know, standing up in the background there. Scooters in the way background on the deck. But I, I um, that whole countertop project, I think, set me back about 300 bucks. It really wasn't a lot of money. Um, that's everything. It's like 350 maybe with all the paint and stuff. And then I'm test fitting the cabinetry to see how well it will fit. Um, by the way, the floor was done. I didn't talk about this because I was talking about the whole condo ownership experience. But the floor I did back in, in 08, February 2008 is when I did that floor. And uh, and I had to cut some of the carpet away, as you'll see in a bit. I had to cut some of the carpet away to move the countertop back enough. So what I did is to see how far back or where that countertop had to go, or that counter bar, I actually pulled the refrigerator out. And I had to use, because I had to make sure that there was enough clearance to pull the fridge out easily. Pull it out of its space and wheel it side, you know, sideways get it out of the kitchen so that's how I did that those are the toys that are buried in the walls to this day um, <clears throat> not many people know they're there but now you're one of them <laughs> uh, but that's what those are you'll see um, so this is looking inside like, like where the where the cabinet actually is and you can see that there's a tile stuck randomly toward on the very far left of the screen that's actually used as a shim so that it's the same height as the rest of it and that is um, as I'm doing the drywall I ran my electrical to the drywall and I had, at this point I had already cut the carpet back so that it, it all fits together and is nice and snug um, yeah that was uh that was my first that was a that was a fun project. It, it really was. First time I'd ever really done much drywall, honestly. And that's the the completed project. You'll see that I put an outlet exactly where my fish tank would go. Um, and uh, you can see I started really. By this point, I really had understood how I wanted the place to look. I wanted to have kind of a, a soothing almost a dark vibe you know I didn't want a bright cheery condo I wanted it to be kind of dark and kind of loungy I guess so I stuck with um I stuck with earth tones and I stuck with darker colors where possible and because I had to find colors that would complement the wood ceiling and the wood beams and based on that the palette I chose was again earthy browns and darker whites and you know more more natural colors initially when i bought the place i was going with a blue and white theme and that didn't last i, I got very sick of that very quickly just looking at some of these photos makes me kind of reminisce and, and kind of i really it was a very relaxing place to be very cozy very very soothing um, yes, I had a claw machine. You'll see at one point I had a claw machine and a Honda Helix parked in the living room. In a living room that is no bigger than the, um, than the second bedroom in my house now. That was a very small living room. Um, it was ridiculously small. 
I think it was by the time I had put the counter to so the countertop bar took away a lot of space. This is the old water heater. Um, I had to replace that was my first plumbing job, by the way. I should mention that. Replacing that water heater was, I believe, that was my my, my first or my second foray into plumbing. I ended up using shark bite fittings because I couldn't get the main shut off to shut off all the way. So there was always water trickling into the line and I couldn't solder it to save my life. So that's where the shark bite fittings came into play. And I picked a, a rude 30 gallon low boy tank. That's what I ended up using. And that's still there to this day, still making hot water. So I did something right. I did that in 2014. So. It's been in there a couple. Now the warranty's out by now. I think it was a six-year warranty on that tank. So, yeah, it's all gone now. So I should mention in this video that my two frogs, the two frogs that are in this in this photo, they have passed away. Um, they were both sisters, and uh, as of uh, as of about two weeks ago, um, would have been. March probably 1st I think somewhere around there um, the oldest one who lasted six years by the way she passed away so I have no more frogs and I have no plans of getting any more now this is a sad one I this is the engine for my Vespa 90 it was a it was a Vespa small frame 90 and I had all the intentions of restoring it but I ended up getting rid of it I why I don't know I, I should have kept it. Um, <clears throat> here's the Helix. Uh, this would have been my last, um, probably the last year I owned it, the last the last uh, winter I owned it. I think this photo was taken sometime in the fall, shortly after I brought it in for the winter. Sometime in late fall. 2015, maybe? I think so. I miss that Helix. That was a fun little bike. Now this is after I set up the big giant desk up in the up in the bedroom, and uh, I still have this desk. It's parked in my basement right now in the in the computer room, and uh, that was a nice desk, huge desk. Um, it still is a nice desk, but uh, <coughs> I didn't want to bring it upstairs into the into the bedroom because it's just too massive um, in in my new house, current house. Oh yeah, the EMAC is in that one. Uh, this I threw in there. This is um, this was the incident that changed everything for me. Um, it just kind of made me reassess a lot of things and realize that I kind of wanted to get out of that condo as soon as possible because it just life is life is short. This is my uh, my Honda Silverwing 600 that got totaled, um, resulting in a fractured leg, which is healed, but you know. Um, I found the bike on Craigslist after the ac well after the accident when it was auctioned off by the insurance company. But I don't have any pictures of the bike when it wasn't crashed. Uh, I have no pictures of it at all. I only owned the bike for a week, and I never had a chance to get any good photos of it. So these are the photos I have of that poor thing. Um, kind of kind of upsetting actually, but hey, it is what it is. Now this is a um, this is what I traded the vest before. This is a uh, Suzuki FZ50. I I only I only got it to restore it. It was an easier restoration project than the Vespa would have been. Um, and this thing came out really nice. I was very very happy with how it came out. Uh, I don't have any good photos of the before, but this is the after. I replaced the fenders. I, all the plastics are new. The fenders. The splash guards, um, everything was new. I, um, I was able to get a lot of new old stock. Now these are the listing photos from when I sold the condo for 65.5. Here's a shot of the living room and that stupid couch that I bought, which I never liked. That was a terrible, terrible decision. Um, and uh, so we're gonna just wrap this up in a little bit. But, um, yeah, that couch, it made the move to the house not here, but we didn't keep it very long. Here's a photo looking down the stairwell. You can see I had it really well decorated, and I had stuff everywhere. It was, it was a little bit too cluttered, but I tried to keep the balance of clutter to, you know, organization pretty, 
pretty thin. And uh, got four more pictures left, and then we can wrap this shit up. Let's see. Oh, here's the bathroom. They changed the bathroom curtain. And of course they did. Yeah, I think I left that curtain behind. I'm not really sure. I thought I left it there. I think I, you know, I know I put in a brand new curtain liner, which I, I bet it's still there. But uh, that shower curtain kind of really set the mood for the house. You know, just the the, the, the dark twilight. I, I don't know. I, I would just, I, I thought it was nice. Um, and there's a shot of the kitchen. Just that was the last um, the last photo I ever took of that kitchen before I sold it. But these are the photos from the actual listing. I um so my realtor let me take my own photos, and uh, so I because I, I know the place I know I know what makes it you know, and uh, this is the shortly before I sold the place I bought an Epson projector, and I used that as a TV in the in the bedroom and it worked out really well because the it had that nice high wall right there, you know. <coughs> Excuse me. So in this photo, we've got the eMac, the classic, Mac Classic. That was when I was using the Dell as a, de as a desktop PC. There's the other side. Um, I still have everything, almost everything in this photo I still have in this house. Just about. But uh, that's going to conclude it. And uh, so thank you for watching. It's kind of fun looking back at where, where I was and where I am now and the journey it took to get there. And um, so you guys uh, should have a, have a nice time. I don't know. What am I going to say, right? <laughs> don't do drugs, kids. Stay in school. <laughs>